Hey guys, it's producer Eric. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what we have coming up for face for merch and supplemental content on September 1st for first members and September 2nd for everyone else. We have the summer of 98 top 10 movie, not draft, but we picked the top 10 movies of the summer of 98. September 8th for first members, September 9th for everyone else will be the summer of 98 ultimate playlist. We'll be releasing the playlist along with that so you can listen to it uh, to round out your summer. There's more. September 15th at 10 a.m. You've been waiting for it. It's the Gerpler restock. We have some really cool stuff going with the Gerpler limited card. Keep your eyes peeled. Follow us at Face Pod on Instagram and on Twitter. You can get a first look at that. And our big day, September 29th. We're doing double duty because at 10 a.m. on September 29th, we will have the vinyl reissue. That's right. Episode 16 brought to you one more time. Different sleeve, same album, but that's not all. Because at 10 p.m., we'll be playing Sloppy Joe's Bingo to bring you our Sloppy Bingo set, our fridge magnet of Jeff's fridge, and the VCK desk mat. 10 a.m., the vinyl reissue. 10 p.m., Sloppy Joe's Bingo. There's a lot on the horizon for face and there's even more we can't talk about yet. So again, do follow us at FacePod on Instagram and on Twitter. Keep up to date with everything. But for now, enjoy this episode. Hey, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. When was the last time you went to Pound Tip? Have you ever been to Pound Town? I have not been to Pound Town. Hello and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> F- Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me as always, Gavin Free, who has never been to Pound Town, and Andrew Panton, who frequents Pound Town. How's it going, guys? I wish I did. What country is it in? I don't know. That's a great I guess question. I, I'm assuming Canada. Eric says this is episode 196. Nope, I 169, baby. 169, baby. Glad it's not 196. That would... I feel like there's a lot of pressure to really deliver on episode 200, and I'm not I'm not ready for that yet. I need time. I don't agree with that. I don't. Either. <laughs> I don't. It, it's the same with like live episodes where people are like, "We gotta do you gotta like really show out for this," and it's like I think people really like the thing that they listen to every week, and just turning in a really strong effort every time is like the way to do it. Okay. That's how I feel. <laughs> No, I feel differently. I, I think all the pressure's on episode 196. That's all. No, oh, wow. Don't <laughs> oh, do that. Fuck. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. That, that was a simple... has to no, be no, no. very good. No. 196. This sucks. <laughs> That's future Jeff's problem, Nick says. <laughs> uh, okay. Episode 169. <laughs> uh, do you... Uh, nice. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to do? I think talk to each other. All right, right? let's talk to That's each other. That's typically how this works. Andrew, my uh, longest arm is 29.5 inches. No, 29.5? Yeah. What do you What do you need with that information? I'm 27.5. Well, we kind of talked about before. I was just thinking about my arm length. I would enjoy being like three or oh, four inches taller. Right. We yeah, we kind of went over it a little bit. I just, I just didn't just know how Nick, much. you don't have to include any of that in there. <laughs> <laughs> What? You know, we can cut that because we we're making. Oh, no, we don't need to cut that. We're making. Well, what I want to know? What's happening? No. What I want to know is how much of your arm you cut out for additional height. Or are you happy with your height? Jim? I'm happy with my height. How tall are you? Six foot tall. Yeah, it's a good height. You're good. If I were to stand up straight, and I, uh, but which is hasn't happened in years. But yeah. Huh? Do you think? Are you now? Are you legs or back? I feel like we've probably been over this. I'm. Uh, I think I have a longer torso than normal, a little bit longer, and I think I'm, I'm. Like I could, I would, if I could change anything about me other than my personality and my face, uh, <laughs> and how strong and fast I am, and uh, like everything from the neck up, I would. I'd make my legs a little longer. I feel like they could be a little mm. longer, but I'm happy at six feet tall. Who's got the most bog standard proportions of all of us? Do you think? You. <laughs> oh yeah. Me or Nick. Nick is such a regulation guy. I bet he has the most regulation <laughs> proportions. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I feel like proportions for Nick would be. You off. think he's got really? stumpy Nick little legs? Yeah, because, well, because he's all he's always wearing a mask, uh, so I think it's tough to even uh, judge his proportions. Well, I see him from time to time without the mask on at work, and he seems very well proportioned. If I'm being honest with you, 
does he just walk around yelling, where's my face? When you, you see that? <laughs> Is this what I imagine? Yeah, he, if we make eye contact, he it's freaks like out. He goes, ah, and he covers his he covers his face up with his hands. And he goes, don't look at me, I'm hideous. <laughs> oh my god, we just uh. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was typing, "Don't look at me, I'm hideous." As I was saying, "Don't look at me, I'm hideous." Ah, Jesus twins. Christ, Nick, we're spending too much time together. Uh oh. I was thinking about something. What were you thinking about? I was thinking about fruit. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. You've consumed a lot of it recently. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about fruit, right? And I've been thinking about us and fruit. We've been a uh-huh. we've been a fruit podcast uh, since way back in apples, right? So we're talking very early on. Uh, mm-hmm. I think maybe, especially given the last few episodes, I think maybe we want to declare. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> requisition that we. Or I'm going to request, rather. I'm going to request that we put a, a temporary moratorium on fruit and fruit-related content. I think maybe really? maybe we've hit the fruit enough for a little while. Maybe we should like pivot into something like we've barely scratched the surface on vegetables. Like I don't. That's true. Do we know? Do new vegetables drop? Is there like a new? <laughs> that's like, a, that is, is there such a new a pumpkin? Great point. Is there a new pumpkin dropping this year? We don't even know because we're not. No. We're so focused on fruit and fruit based activities that we're not paying attention to cucumbers and gourds and potatoes. Wow. And all, wow. And, and root about, like anything that like all. Holy there's a whole shit. other world of vegetables that we're not corn. What's going on with corn? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I. I've never been less on board and more on board. The idea that there's a new potato, I gotta fucking know about that. If there's a new potato, Dude, we gotta try potatoes. I there's love so potatoes. many different kinds of potatoes. Really? Oh my god, Peru alone uh, grows like a hundred different kinds of potatoes. It's insane. Are you serious? There's so much potato. Tomatoes. There's a million. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm gonna Google it. How many different potatoes are there? How many kinds of potatoes? Now, when you started this, Jeff, it was 4, like... 4,000! Had... Sorry, you were There's 4,000... T- oh, my God. I am... I want to go to a grocery store right now to see what I can find. There's what? 1,000 bananas? I want a bag of chips <laughs> that are each a different potato. <gasps> oh, no, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah, that's I wonder... Well, I, there's probably, like, a standard, right, of, like, what potato best cuts and like cooks correctly for what they want to go for i wonder if like a standard chip is a different potato on average as opposed to like a kettle chip because it's a different process that's a good question i I think most potato chips are bought like they come i I would say there's a lot of obviously a lot of different kinds of potatoes there's four thousand, right but there's a lot that you're even familiar with but i would say like the most bog standard regulation potato would probably be a russet potato and yeah. i think that's what most potato chips are made out of as well oh hmm. this is a whole this is i'm i kind of regret that we're doing two today because i want to go do some research i want to be prepared i'm not gonna have time to do notes <laughs> well we, I mean, we, we can allocate you a special 10 minutes between recordings if you want to do research uh, i need more time for potatoes <laughs> you got to really take your time with a high quality vegetable like that oh dude though speaking of chips Oh, the chips are here. We got it. I all. got the chips. Oh, it's all we, ready to Everyone go. has their chips. Do you want to know how dumb we are, uh, Gavin, just as a collective? Sure. The big trouble has been for getting me the last of Jeff's chips. That has been the thing that has been putting this on hold for a long time. Eric sent me a list of all the chips. I did my best to try to find places that would mail them at non-insane prices. Uh, we went back and forth. I sent him a link to a place that appeared like it would ship to me. In fact, they wouldn't ship to Canada. It caused this whole delay. I'm sure it was a massive headache. We're then trying to figure out a new place. And this is after maybe three or four weeks of this process. It was like we were trying. I had the realization. Wait a second. Eric lives in America. These are Jeff's chips. Eric certainly could just go to any grocery store, buy these, and then have that. (laughs) We didn't say that for two months. What are you talking about? (laughs) We didn't consider that. Until what do you mean we didn't consider that? <laughs> that was not Especially that came into consideration ten days ago. Considering that I created my list by going to H E B and just going to the chip aisle. 
I also keep shipping you shit. It's it's easy. <laughs> it's, it's expensive, but it's easy. We could have done this months ago. Eric. Well, why, didn't, why didn't you just ship them the chips then? That's it's kind true. of on you, I think. You could have shipped them with Norm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anything, this is kind of on you, man. This is kind of okay, sure. honestly to like, what a hold up. I'm, yep. re I'm really excited about the crisps. Gavin had the solution this whole time and he was gatekeeping. And he, it for and us. he kept it to himself, which is the weirdest part. Like, I don't know why you would keep it to yourself. That just seems That's weird. why, whenever you were like, everything's there except for Jeff's, I was like, huh? We talk, like, my ones are the difficult ones. And we've had, you've had no, those for ages. No, yours were, no, yours were easy. Ah, I'll be right back. Yours were really easy. The thing. All right. What? Well, the thing with some of Jeff's selections <laughs> is if you're, if you're a big chip head. <laughs> Uh, they are considered some high quality chips, so it's tough to import them to other places because there is demand. I uh, I'm coming prepared for the chip draft, not a draft, but like the chip off, I guess. Is what yeah, we're calling I'm back. Right, the taste chip off. off. Yeah. Also, I've uh, well, actually, I haven't finished. I would have finished if we weren't waiting for Andrew for half an hour before this. But the Sustrumming video is almost done. <gasps> oh, awesome! I'll have That's you cut great. by the end of the day. We have a lot oh of stuff God. coming out on all of these, uh, all of our channels and everything. And uh, Jeff would be able to speak with this if he was here. I but, am here. Uh, oh, great. You're back. Uh, I announced you, when I got back. I did. Did anyone hear him say I'm back? No. He Fantastic. Didn't know. Uh, so Nickel uh, here Jeff in has the a fucking new edit. podcast called <laughs> So All Right, which has just come out this week. Uh, you can go. We talked about this last week, right? Yeah, yes. What's your hard on for this podcast? Yeah. Why are we doing this again? Because it's out now. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Jeff voted well, no. no I mean, if, Eric, if so. Eric's got his dick all hard about my podcast, I'm not going to stop him from <laughs> fucking talking about it. I can it. be done. Nick for, I some don't... Reason, Nick, for some reason, is listed as the producer, and in, we're in all these meetings, and they go, Nick, are you producing this? And he goes, I don't I don't think so. And uh, yeah, we don't really know what's happening. So. I'm trying oh, to make so it Nick as... Nick got spreadsheeted into a that's, job. <laughs> hey, hey, Gavin, that's exactly what happened. For the record, I'm trying to make this as easy on Nick as humanly possible. I edit it myself, then I just give really? him a file, and then I just he just adds mute. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to diminish what he does, <laughs> but I edit all the content myself because it's just me talking, and I do multiple takes and stuff, so I know how I want it to sound. I so see. instead of leaving that for him to try to, like, that mess for him to try to put together, I try to give him a complete file that then he can, you know, normalize audio and then add some bumpers and, you know, a little bit of audio texture here and there. Um, but I'm trying, to make, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for Nick to produce this podcast. Oh, that's nice. Would you say you're happy with the podcast so far? Me? Yeah. I think so. I've recorded six now, and I've released zero. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've fully edited five of the six, and I only had to re-record one, and I haven't tried to kill myself yet, so... That's I good. I think I'm... That's a positive. Dude, fucking... Yeah, it's been pretty good. Speaking of, like, <laughs> <laughs> not trying to kill myself, is anybody else just really happy all the time right now? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're, just, you're describing like mania. <laughs> yes. No, I don't think so. I, 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 I think what it is. I understand why you would think that, but right, I just think based what it on is, your description. Well, mania comes in waves, doesn't it? I think right, he's talking yeah, no, about yeah, like a consistent. Yeah, no, it's it's mania, and I'm trying to think of what was happening right before the mania. Was it? Like a severe depressive episode where he was hating himself for a long time. Those uh, things can't certainly be hand in hand. I think the summer of 98 is really rubbing off on the group. I think we're I getting all the vibes of the summer of 98. Oh, Have you it. visited Pound Town recently? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal with, with my depressive state from those recordings, Eric is because I was right. I have gone back and listened to those episodes, and I'm not <laughs> phenomenal in them. And uh, my harshest critic, uh, who's also my biggest supporter, Emily, has confirmed that I was off in those episodes. And she's like, oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. You're not great. <laughs> so, like, I know, <laughs> I know I was right to be bummed about my performance. Uh, we also, I thought last week was a f phenomenal episode, and I was happy with my performance. But I think oh, the great. reason I'm so excited about it lately is because we... We've been doing so much lately for the f face and, and like the f face yeah. umbrella. We've yeah. got so we've we've got it worked out. You know, there's stuff that we're working on behind the scenes, stuff that we, we've talked a little bit about here and there, like f face off and some other stuff we've got going. But we've, we're, we're making a lot of content in the background right now. And it's getting to a point where it's we almost have we will almost have a piece of content a day, Monday through Friday. Uh, and I just am jazzed about that. Like, I, it, it's like, 
Gavin always talks about how he has trouble sleeping the night before an episode. I do too. And then we're just like walking around our houses, like fucking vibrating before we record the podcast. I'm waking up like that every day right now because every day, dude, I slept like dog shit last night because you're excited about this. Oh, it's a shock. <laughs> well, it was mainly because uh, my phone started going ape shit and I got a blue alert. Um, I guess some no cop got wait a second shot in Houston, and uh, in they decided Houston. that I should wake up at five a.m. to to hear about it. You know, I didn't uh, get that three, blue alert. They sent like three alerts about it too. It was crazy. Everybody was you complaining it about it on Reddit. Yeah, I didn't get a single one. I, 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 I mean, I'm fine with being on the lookout, but I think at five a.m. is a little much. And in Houston, <laughs> in Houston, what's what am I gonna do? Drive there? Get real. It overrides the whole <laughs> do not disturb thing. It does. I thought you were calling me out because I texted you at like 4 a.m. because I could not sleep. And I was like, I need to get in the lab and solve this problem. We've been doing this for like three years. I need to figure this shit out. Yeah, that didn't buzz my phone with the sound going, ah! I don't know what sound that, whatever you just did, yeah, didn't I didn't, come through. There, if there was a sound, we didn't hear it. it you are the quiet. worst at conveying sounds. <laughs> whatever I make a noise, my Discord just shuts me up. <laughs> yeah, oh. this is no. You can turn that off, can't you? I, well, I made a horrible sound. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. I trust it. <laughs> like, was it like a, like a, ah! was it like that? What type I mean, of sound? You're not, you're not far off. How come yeah. I can hear his sounds? Because he has Cause I'm good at sounds. Off. Noise I, suppression. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I have a fan on, so I assume you'd hear that if my noise suppression was off. Yeah. Mm. Well, you okay. can turn the fan turn off, the fan I off. assume. <laughs> Although, maybe it's essential for your air. It's a, is it an air thing? Well, yeah, I gotta blow the carbon dioxide away from yeah, me and the yeah, cat. Get rid of it. All the, it's all the cat <laughs> breath is just laying right on top of him. He's got to get it away from him. Eric told me he's a he's a Smee fan. Oh, I decided that I like Gavin's insane cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was the thing that made you? I just I, I've just heard so many stories about the insane cat that I've decided that I'm a big Smee fan. Do like, you think you'll hold him next time you come over? No, because I think he'll like he'll like physically harm me in a way that will be like not funny to me anymore. <laughs> I, I think you described him as like imagine if a cat could bite you as hard as it can and like what that feels like uh, because that's what he does every time and it's like oh that's terrifying that's like really scary to me. Oh, speaking of Smee, uh, Andrew, Eric, and the, you may not be aware of this. Eric and I have taken up residence in Gavin's pool. Uh, for every Saturday from here on until we die. Okay. We really? Yeah. Yeah. We just have. We just have. We're just there now. This will be the third Saturday in a row we're making them let us come over, and I don't see any reason to stop. <laughs> and Eric doesn't get in the pool. I assume he's by. No, he I, does. Oh, I, I was the first really? one in the pool. Really? Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's a. It's a sh here's the thing. It's a very shallow <laughs> pool. And ah. it's so hot outside, <laughs> there is no choice. <laughs> you you have to get in the water, which is warm. Uh, it, we're and, in the bath, is what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when you said shallow pool, my mind immediately goes to like one of those kiddie plastic pools you would buy at like Walmart. I'm just imagining all of you in yeah. a child pool just standing. With water our jeans rolled up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been this fun. is a great time. Every weekend, we, we show up and stand in Gavin's kiddie pool. Every, every Saturday, we stand in Gavin's kiddie pool and drink liquid. Dough. It's, all, <laughs> yeah. it's been a lot of fun. It's a good it's tradition. Become a, it's become a real tra tradition. I, speaking of, of happy, I agree. Jeff, I, I've also been, I feel very happy recently. I'm excited about all the stuff we have going on. Uh, I, I, not to take it to too morbid of a place, but I had a realization that has brought me a lot of joy these last few days. I was talking to Gracie, who is a producer on this show, helps with like social clips and stuff. Mm -hmm. They were the voice that said, um, is this show happening or whatever? A few weeks ago, I saw people confused as to who that voice was, which yeah. uh, when I yeah. was having technical difficulties. There was a post in the subreddit that just said, who was that woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. It was fantastic. But I was having a conversation with Gracie. And I had this thought that I've never considered about what I will look like on paper to future generations of people in my family, mm. like six generations or whatever from now, somebody is going to look back at their family tree and realize they're related to the Garfield cart <laughs> sneak spaghetti guy. And it just brings me so much joy to know the disappointment and fear they will probably have looking at 
me on paper and what here's, I have accomplished. Here's what you need to do. Maybe we should all do this to secure uh, the longevity of uh, of our memory and and, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know uh, our accomplishments. I think you should get one of those old timey paintings that people uh, <laughs> where you're like standing in a suit looking like looking like three quarter off and you look very debonair and uh, it's like giant and usually like in a great library above somebody's big fireplace. I think we should commission and get one of those made. Then it becomes a family heirloom. And then your family is required to pass it down from age to age and hang it up <laughs> in a house. So people will always be aware of you. You'll be omnipresent <laughs> for every generation to come. Uh, and I think we probably all deserve that. I think we should get five of them. I think that's really funny. Eric just posted the photo of Tony Soprano with the horse, which yes. is, I love. Yes. That is yeah. like the idea. <laughs> exactly. Is it vandalism to put a balaclava on a statue? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a I don't great think so. question. And if because did you have that thing in in in, uh, in your towns growing up where if there was a statue, everyone would climb them and put condoms on the fingers? Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> just, not specifically oh. that. Yeah, like that. I pretty much every every statue in England of someone pointing, they've got a Johnny on their finger. <laughs> Was there a rash of of like British statue pregnancies in the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> no, people just people just want them to be protected, I guess, against whatever could happen. I <laughs> think that if you want to find out if it's vandalism to put a balaclava on a statue, get the Andrew Panton one. I just want to see how many Andrews take a picture <laughs> and tweet it at us. No, you shouldn't do that. You get arrested for it. Right, but it's a funny right, idea. right. Don't. Right, we're not condoning it, but if you happen to do it and send a picture, that would be interesting and we'd love to see it. But only but, if you happen to run across it and you yeah. didn't do it yourself. And if do you happen to uh, spot the person who did it and they take it down immediately after the picture, that's probably fine. But also don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't listen to them. Just don't do, do it. Do we have the budget, Eric, to make a very large one of those and then maybe somehow get it on the Statue of Liberty? That would be You're true. asking if this show, this podcast that we couldn't send chips to you has the budget to put a mask on the Statue of Liberty. The chips wasn't a financial issue. That was an IQ problem. I a good idea. I, I will say chips was also a financial issue because do you know how much it is to ship just trying to get stuff yes. to Canada? Oh, my God. It was like $50. It's insane. It, yeah, it was 55 well, bucks for that DVD set. Hey, guys, I think I've I think we've stumbled on a new business model. <gasps> ship a chip. How to oh. covertly Ooh. and cheaply ship chips to Canada from the United States. <laughs> and what makes them cheaper than anything yeah. else? I don't know. We'll have to figure that part out. I can't answer every question all at once. I've given you step one and I've given you profit. You're going to have to put some fucking effort to come up with steps two and three. I don't know if a as a Rooster Teeth affiliate, we are qualified to conduct in low shipping for <laughs> overseas <laughs> ventures. God um, damn, dude. They make is it, there a way hard. we can incorporate this with like, thank me later like where i buy oh. the chips but i don't want them for several months internationally it's called, yeah. it's called it's called what the fuck and it just charges you the insane shipping costs sometime randomly and you just look at your statement and go what the fuck what was that where did that where did all my money go it's like it's thank me later plus comes with what the fuck for expired chip and think you're saving money <laughs> but it's just, it's giving it to you at some unannounced time that's probably really inconvenient for you. It's is the it exact a, opposite of Spirit of Thank Me Later. Is it the opposite? That a bag of ketchup chips shows Yeah, because Thank Me Later is about the joy of receiving a thing that you wanted and didn't expect it, where what the fuck is receiving a thing you don't want probably at a time in which you, you really don't need it to happen. Right. Mm. So I think it's the mm. exact opposite of Spirit. What the f face? Whoa. Oh. Now it's all connected. Mm. See, that's why you're the names guy here, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, out. I'm the guy who helped come up with Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter. <laughs> don't, don't listen to any of my naming ideas ever. I've been looking at everyone's uh, official titles on Slack. Uh, we've got some. Oh, yeah. We've got some good ones on here. We've got, uh, well, Eric is director of broadcast. I don't think I've been that for eight or nine months now. Nick is okay. director of audio production. What we got? Uh, uh -huh. Co founder is Jeff. Uh -huh. Andrew is face achievement hunter and i'm obviously the chancellor of the exchequer um but <laughs> i noticed that uh gracie's one f, -brand. f brands what is that like is that the face jam and f face 
Yeah, let me explain to you what the F brands are and why we're a company that's never named something well a day in our life. (laughs) What's what's F brands? F brands is the thing that I channel manage that I oversee. I oversee face. Yeah. I oversee face jam. And for my final F brand, uh, it's Anma. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yeah. So you figure that out because I still can't. Gracie, can you change your title to line producer E Brands? It's basically any brand that Eric runs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we call it F Brands? Why don't we just call it E Brands? I don't know. I, I don't know. To me, it just I, looked like uh, I don't want to put f- face as my <laughs> job title. Nope. F, F okay. Brands is the thing because it's Face GM also. And then I keep, and then it's at the beginning of all of this, I went, what's well, Anma, right? And they I, go, right, but like, we'll just call it F Brands. And I just go, it's fine. As long as it's not public facing, it doesn't matter. So, anyway, now it's public facing. Thank you so much. I will uh, say there are a lot of people in the company who don't like to say F face. And really? they refer to it as F face. F face. And so, they're, they're, I feel like it's to provide cover also for some people who just aren't comfortable with uh, with some of the, the, you know. Do you think maybe some of those people work for the wrong company? I did, uh, no. Do, do no. I think that? I no. couldn't say. Okay. No, I I don't. I really don't. Okay. Uh, I have also, mine says co-founder and comma other things. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> Who puts those there? Well, some of the F brands. You I do. So. You put <laughs> those sure there. You should know. Also, I was, you know, achievement hunter, rooster teeth. <laughs> you know, I wasn't, you're criticizing your name ability, but f- face as well. I mean, you clearly, you're great at this. I'm happy with f- face. I think it's, good. it's a name. Thank you. I'll agree with that. <laughs> we can't, you know, listen, like what, what is a good batting average in baseball? It's like less uh, than 500%, right? Th- 300, 300, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I mean, you're That's swinging a- way above 300. Oh, thanks, man. I'll take that. In the name department, you're doing great. But have you, I'm curious, like, have you ever thought about, like, how you will come across to other people that don't know you in the future? Yeah, so I'm I'm getting the painting made. (laughs) It just has, like, reshaped my view of how I do things. Like, anytime there's a sleep spaghetti, I know I'm disappointing a future generation (laughs) of my family, and it just makes it even funnier to me. Here... The, the reality, like that is funny. That's a funny angle to take. But the reality is I don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me alive or dead or not living yet. Like I'm never going to meet those people and have the opportunity to give them my side of the story. So fuck them. They can like me or not. <laughs> I, we'll never. Our paths will never cross. They don't exist yet. Uh, to be clear, I don't care if they like me or dislike me. I just think it's hilarious. Like it brings me joy. I will be dead, but I will. I'm laughing in my death yeah. at just knowing somebody's gonna have to uncover all this shit. Well, why why don't you leave a personalized message to um, little Steve, six <laughs> generations down from you? <laughs> that would be really creepy if there was a little Steve six generations down. You never know. It could happen. It could. Do I just have to write like letters for a bunch of names and just see? You could just say it right now. You could just give a message to Steve. Ah, I don't know. It's it's a lot of pressure. It's not. I listen. I'll I'll dedicate some terrible thing to Lil Steve in the future. Okay. Lil Steve. What's (laughs) the most? What are like the most popular names in the world? You could just like Uh, just cover that. David. True. John. But then there might be. You know, like Elmer was really big in like 1940. (laughs) There's not a lot of Elmers now. (laughs) Yeah. Things come in and out. It'll come around. It'll be like Horace or something. Yeah. John, I bet you John is probably the most popular name of all time. Hmm. What is the most, most popular, popular name? Probably Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Maria is like the most popular name on earth. It really? Is. Really? Yeah. I just looked uh, it up. It is, yeah. So. Yeah. I know. Mm. Gavin, what would you say to your future uh, progeny? Uh, hello, little thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hello there. Please, like, because he's he's in my head. He's three. So I'm, okay. Yeah. Oh, you you guys are much nicer to future uh, <laughs> versions of you did, did, than did I would your be. Future, like, here's what I would say. I say, hey, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Look at what I did. What are you doing? Get, get, <laughs> we, I, I built something here. Get your get your head out of your ass and work harder. Do some stuff. That's I all. like you're scolding them for for looking at what you did by saying, look at what I did. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm saying if every if everybody that comes after me isn't is less successful than me, I think they're fucking losers. But if they're more <laughs> successful than me, they're fucking what bragging suckers. They've got to be exactly they've got to be exactly as successful as I was. Yeah, it's like when you play video games and anyone better than you is like a no life to loser and anyone <laughs> worse than you is it's like a yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It's really funny to me the idea that little Steve is getting that message and then progresses to see what you did and it's drink a bunch of fruit, make Kool Aid yeah, dollars on fruit, <laughs> get I can em- do that, get embarrassingly drunk on ten thousand hours of video footage and then get- <laughs> and then <laughs> and then discover fruit. Oh man. <sighs> okay. Oh, bl- bloody uh, Kent Nichols just texted me. Oh, uh, what do you say? It's just talking about lenses and shit. It was funny when I saw him in um, in Vegas. I uh, I said I haven't spoken to you since lockout, which was like a Halo Two map, which I think was the last time I played Halo with him. <laughs> it's funny, like remembering the last time I hung out with someone, but it was in a completely virtual world. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <sighs> just lock. What, well, wait, were you guys playing MCC or were you playing? Nah, no. Talking like two thousand. Oh, this is five, probably. Oh wow, that might be the last time Kent played a video game. <laughs> He's not a big gamer. <laughs> this ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Fall is right around the corner, and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date. Then lay back and enjoy the last days of summer knowing dinner is covered. Banish the end of summer blues with HelloFresh. No need to stress about how you'll handle it all this fall because HelloFresh takes care of the meal planning and delivers pre-portioned ingredients right to your home, so whipping up a homemade meal is a cinch. The key to dinnertime success? Variety. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from every week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll always find new and exciting recipes to try and love. I absolutely love HelloFresh. It's such a great service. The food is always so good. The recipes are great. It's so convenient. It gets sent straight to your door. As I say every time, just getting the box is exciting and opening it all up. It is awesome. So if you would like to try HelloFresh, please go to HelloFresh.com slash 50face and use code 50face for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50face and use code 50face for 50% off plus free shipping. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are times in life, certainly at least in my experience, where you have no idea what to do, where you're faced with a problem, where there just doesn't seem to be a good answer, and those are incredibly difficult and very valuable times to have people in your life that you can talk to about those issues. It's, I think, something we all experience and... Even though sometimes it doesn't feel like there's a right answer, just being able to go through that experience and reflect on the other side, I think, is so important. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier you get. Therapy is, I think, such an important process to go through. It has benefited my life tremendously in all sorts of ways. I've recently been trying to work on stuff relating to my anxiety and just having some conversations with people in that space uh, have really opened up my eyes to certain things that I didn't even realize I needed to work through, which is so beneficial and important. I think that's why therapy is great because... um, not to get too deep into my own personal stuff, but it would be like trying to fix a knee problem by doing stuff to your shoulder and just focusing on your shoulder, not even realizing that you have a knee issue to begin with. But through my process with therapy for what I'm kind of currently sorting through, it has allowed me to identify what really the problems are so I can begin to progress and figure that stuff out and also just understand that like, you always are going to be figuring stuff out. It's never, it's never done. You have to constantly improve, or at least I would like to try to do that as a person. But anyhow, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash face today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. Wait too long on a punchline and you kill the joke. Make your customer wait too long for checkout and you just lost a sale. Power your business with the internet's best converting checkout experience. Get Shopify. <laughs> Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling t-shirts from Shopify's in-person POS system or selling waffle makers on Shopify's all one e-commerce platform, you're covered. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify is the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. One of the things I love about Shopify is it's just such a great set of tools that allows you to grow your business as big as you want. It gives you everything you need to take it from one level to the next, and you have full control over everything. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., and Shopify is truly a global force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 different countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support you every step of the way. They're fantastic. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash face, all lowercase. That's go to shopify.com slash face to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash face. I have an exciting update. I may have indirectly talking about family lineage. This podcast may have been discovered by somebody notable. Some, a famous, a, a famous person. We've talked about famous people listening to the show before. I had the, something crazy happened. Crazy is maybe a strong word. My cousin got married. My cousin got married to the person who invented Masterclass, and they had like a big, like rich, whatever, famous person wedding recently. Were you invited? And, uh, I was not <laughs> invited. No, sadly. <laughs> It's not invited. It's a tough one, Jeff. I don't know. You immediately <laughs> you took swing. Took a I'm swing just asking. Lord. I'm just asking. That's I'm fair. Take it a fair swing. question. How, what cousin? First, second, third, fourth, eighth? Uh, I, I don't know what any of those things are. Are you close what to is, them? No. Okay. But they're family. Similar age range? Uh, yeah. Relatively close. Did you close. see them at like uh, summer barbecues and get togethers and Christmas, Thanksgiving, that kind of thing? I probably haven't seen this cousin in like 16, 17 years. What's that favorite book? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm okay. sure I could find that out for you if you really want to no, know. I, I could try to get back in touch. Okay. Yeah, please do. Anyway, they had a wedding, and at the table was Christina Aguilera, the family wedding, or whatever. <laughs> so she's hanging out with them, <laughs> and they were, they were talking. My uncle was talking. Now, nobody in my family knows anything about video games. So they're talking to Christina Aguilera, who's at this wedding. And they were just trying to make small talk. And they asked, like, what is your favorite thing to do? Like, what in your off time, what do you enjoy doing? And apparently, Christina Aguilera fucking loves Mario Kart. Super in the Mario Kart. They're like, this is all I play whenever I have free time. I play Mario Kart. My uncle, unknowingly, wasn't attempting to lie, heard that, knew my past history with Garfield Kart, thought video game, kart game, said to Christina Aguilera, that's my, I have a nephew who's the best player in the world at that game. They have, they have all of the best times in that game, in that Mario Kart game. <laughs> Christina Aguilera was apparently very impressed by this, was very excited by this news, was like, who is he? My uncle gave them Immediately my Immediately wanted your info. Yeah, exactly. So I don't, who knows if she ever followed through on that, but there is a possibility in which Christina Aguilera for a brief time thought that I was the best Mario Kart player in the world, looked me up, and only discovered f Face and Garfield Kart 2. Hmm. And that makes me really happy. Do you think she'll eventually challenge you? No, I don't think so. I don't think she's impressed by Garfield Kart 2, I'd assume. Hmm. Well, she probably never tried it. She might feel That's true. Did. That would rule if we just out of nowhere had a... 
a gaming video where you were, <laughs> you and Christina Aguilera <laughs> playing Mario Kart for some reason. I think our friends call her X Tina. Do you uh, think? Yeah? Do you think if you got really, really, really good times in Mario Kart now, you could get Christina Aguilera's attention? Like you, like you're closer uh, than you were before. You know what I mean? You are closer yeah. to Christina Aguilera than you've ever been. That's true. Yeah, don't don't blow this. No, well, I don't. I don't think I can. There's no. There's nowhere to go from this. I don't even have the top times in Garfield Kart anymore. I'm not getting any top time. And right, right. But we Mario have to move on from Garfield Kart. We got to get Mario yeah. Kart top times to hang oh, out with Christina to... Aguilera, your cousin's friend, or whatever. You need to start training. Yeah, start learning the skips. Yeah, what are you I doing? Don't... Is she into? Is she into nugget challenges? Maybe is there? I... Like... <laughs> I don't know. Do you think she sure. does like she like speed runs? Like she wants like AGDQ oh, or whatever. Yeah. She's, like, she's into like maybe she does like Rainbow Road skip stuff and she's like really doing that. Possible. Mm. It's possible. She's big on the link to the past randomizer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she loves those. She's That's her number. That animals. was her number two. Great. Yeah. <laughs> her number two favorite thing to do is watch randomizer videos. Big into it. Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Watching randomizer speedrun <laughs> videos. It's so funny. I, I wonder if you guys will have like a friendly rivalry or if it'll be acrimonious from the start. Oh, I think it would be a friendly rivalry. Well, maybe. I don't really have like genuine mean like hatred rivalries. What do you mean? <laughs> she might. <laughs> well, that's yeah, but I guess like, you need two to go that way. No, I don't think you do. There's a lot of people that hate me who I don't hate back. <laughs> I have, I have a no, I, I bear no ill will towards a ton of people who hate the <laughs> fuck out of me. But now what am I going to do? Would you describe that as a rivalry? I think it needs to go both ways. <laughs> On their end, I think it is. I think that's just hatred. I don't think that's a rivalry. <laughs> I think there needs to be a mutual thing for it to be an actual rivalry. Although the exception to that Eric would know better about this than I would. Doesn't these are wrestling people? Doesn't like Jim Cornette hate Vince Russo, and Vince Russo is indifferent to Jim Cornette, but Jim Cornette can't stand like he just actively wants Vince Russo to die. Yeah, over wrestling. Yeah, it's like that's. I guess I'd call that a rivalry, and that is it's seemingly very one sided rivalry. I think the way to look at it is that it means so much to one guy, and it doesn't like the thing. <laughs> that he feels like the other guy ruined it means so much to him and the guy that quote unquote ruined it doesn't give a fuck about it so much that he doesn't care that this other guy wishes him dead <laughs> there's a great compilation of i think it was dark side of the ring like covered them in some way which is like a vice wrestling thing where it's jim Cornette yelling at vince russo being like i am gonna kill that motherfucker and piss on his grave i will choke him out i will make his children watch he is a no good line son of a bitch and then cut to vince russo just being like it's wrestling from 20 years ago jesus christ when are we gonna move on it would really be like jeff like if you just were so mad at gavin for something that happened in Worms in 2008. <laughs> and, and Gavin was like, it's fucking Worms. I, I, mean, I mean, I've had that conversation with a few people. <laughs> I was about to say, I think you've just described my relationship with Ray. I think he's still <laughs> mad at me about shit. <laughs> Dude, I, I, he's, still, he's still mad at me that I threw some fucking blocks in front of him in a Mario game in 2012. <laughs> Uh, I think the biggest version of that's probably how the Philadelphia 76ers have a rivalry with the Boston Celtics who don't care because we beat them uh, with our 6th through 10th starter or 6th through 10th man. And Joel Embiid goes to bed every night punching a pillow, seeing a picture of Jason Tatum. And Jason Tatum doesn't think about Joel Embiid at all. I, uh, Confetti game. I love Ray and I really miss playing games with him. I bl I blew him up once with C4 in a game of Rainbow Six and I thought he was going to murder me in real life. <laughs> yeah, <he was. laughs> Just because I kept opening doors with C4 instead of the handle and he was <laughs> <laughs> really not happy about it after a while. I remember that day, dude. <laughs> I forgot you did that. Oh, I feel bad about that. See, no. now imagine there's a documentary where they ask Ray about it and he goes, I'll kill you, I'll fucking kill you, I'll kill you. And then it hard cuts to you and you go, oh yeah, that was funny. Like, that's, that's all this is.
Do you, um, what was the last trait that you noticed in a, a random stranger that you thought, I, I'll never be <laughs> that guy? Like, I'll never have that trait. I, I should give an example. What, right? what are you Please talking about? Please give an example. I just... Uh, oh my God. I was, with a, <laughs> I was just out in public. Guy's phone rang, rang and uh, he just answered it. And he just said, he just answered it. He went, talk to me. And I just figured I'm never going to be a talk to me guy. I'm never going to answer the phone and say, talk to me. I could never pull that off. And I feel like I'm noticing that about people a lot more where I just differ from them at my core level. Would it help? Do, do you, would you like to be a talk to me guy? Like, would you feel good if you did no, that? No, I don't think I would. I, okay. There's something about it I don't like about it. So you're happy not to be that guy? Yeah, I mean, nothing against that guy or, or talk to me guys. I just don't think that's a cool thing to say when you answer the phone. <laughs> oh, you don't think no, it's cool? No, I just don't think it's very cool. And I wouldn't ever you've try never, it. you've never tried it. But you um, might. Well, how about I'd this? Be, After we record, what if I call you and you just throw it out there? You just say talk to me, oh, and then I'd be, yeah, I'd be just to see to, how it feels. Uh, try it privately. But yeah, yeah. Um, any comment leavers, if you're a uh, talk to me people, <laughs> let me know if you think it's cool and I'm and I'm wrong. There was, I was, uh, there was. Uh, I heard the story about this guy that was in Vegas, and uh, his last name was Free. <laughs> And the waitress was like, that's a funny name. And she said, uh, have you ever gotten anything free because of that? And then they said, maybe this drink. And then they didn't get it for free. A place that is famous for giving free drinks. So I, there's, I'd say that's the only like character thing I've had recently. I don't know if you've heard that story, but. Look, I know I'm not cool. <laughs> I'm already aware. That's what I thought this was. I thought that you, like the opposite of Icarus, yeah. were very far from the son of cool and heard <laughs> this guy and were like, maybe I could be that. Maybe I could be that guy. That guy's cool. Talk to me, guy. <laughs> Gavin, he, he presented it as like, do you ever see somebody out in the wild and you think like, oh, that's a trait I'll never have. But what he meant to say is, don't you hate some people? <laughs> but I didn't hate him. I just thought he's like a business guy in a tie. He he would probably have someone, you know, wanting to know about an upcoming trade. And I think in that environment, talk to me is absolutely the, the thing to say. It mm. is fair. I feel like talk to me should be reserved for like Jack Bauer. Like that's somebody <laughs> who is trying to stop a terrorist attack and needs immediate information. That's a good point, you know. I think talk to me always comes from a call you're expecting, doesn't it? Like, yeah. If, if your uncle you haven't spoken to in three years just <laughs> randomly rang and you, you would never be like, talk to me. <laughs> it would never happen. Do you, do you answer the phone differently for different things? No. Uh, yes. And what are some different yeah, I was say, options? And now you expand on that. <laughs> um, well, usually I answer hello. And if it's my Italian granddad, I, I make fun of him by saying Hello. <laughs> What? It didn't really come across yeah, whatever what do you, you tried to do. What do you say? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, I see. I just, That's I just do it in his though. voice. Yeah. That's like a cute thing. Do you do the thing where you pretend that you're surprised by the person who called you even though there's caller ID? No. No. I do that all the time. I'm never just like... <laughs> I'm never just like... giving hey, them like a nice treat? <laughs> I don't. Do do? But everyone don't expects know. you to have looked at the phone. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if somebody calls me and I'll look at it and I'll answer it, I'll be like, hello? And then they'll be like, hey, I'm, th and I'll be like, oh, it's you. Every time. That's just what I do. <laughs> I've never considered it. Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> well, do you just say, hey, Jeff? Like, do you just, what, what would you say? You two, okay. Do I say, hey, Jeff? <laughs> no, you two act out a call right now. Jeff, you're calling Gavin. Bring. All right. Bring. <laughs> Ring. You say all right? You haven't picked up yet. Oh. Ring. It's still ringing. Uh, hello? Hey, what's up? It's Jeff. Hey. Hey, I'm coming over to swim in your pool. You don't have to be there. That's what I do, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not what, that's not what you described. Let what? me answer it like Andrew. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bling. Bling. Hello? Hey, what's up? Who is Are this? Are you okay? <laughs> it's Jeff. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Okay, this is my point. <laughs> Jeff clarified who he was. Oh. He knows there's a call thing. Yeah. That's what, that's what I guess what I actually meant. There's always a <laughs> clarification of who's calling when I don't feel like it's needed. Mm. Well, that's not how I answer the phone. 
if I were to get a call from any of you, here, let's do it. Or anybody, rather. I answer the phone the same way for everybody. Okay. Uh, here. Uh, Gavin, you're calling Jeff. Yeah, call me. Ring, ring. All right, I'm picking up. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, hey, it's Gavin. What's wrong? Is, is everything okay? Are you quitting? Uh, you're, not, you're not in the pool right now. That's what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. Because usually when somebody calls, there's something wrong, and it's going to cost me money or time. Okay, so that's that's kind of what I was driving at. Jeff, like, maybe maybe you're the person I should be talking to. When, <laughs> when you have workers who have to come to your house or, or someone that you have to, like, talk to over the phone, they're going to be doing work or whatever, do you just say hello when you answer? <laughs> Uh, I will say, uh, I'll say, uh, hello, this is Jeff speaking. No, okay. That's okay. That's what I was getting. I answer the phone when I know that it's someone like that. I just say, this is Eric. Ooh, that's <laughs> that makes sense. Eric. Yeah. That's, that's so what formal. I was getting at. But I, I feel like maybe asking Andrew and Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> <When> I, <laughs> they run into those situations. <laughs> well, the okay. Story. Call me as though you're uh, a family member calling me without texting me first. <laughs> <laughs> Bring, bring. <laughs> Who's dead? Uh, <laughs> look at your caller ID, dumbass. It's your cousin, Wilbur. Wait, why would they Free. be dead if they're on my caller ID? Wilbur? I said it's your cousin, dumbass. It's Wilbur Free, your cousin. You know me. I'm in your phone under Wilbur. Cool, best cousin. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the? That's the worst phone call I've ever had in my life. I'm never calling you back. This you is tell me my least dead. favorite cousin. <laughs> I didn't say anybody was, what? Nobody's dead. It's your cousin Wilbur. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. Uh, bring, bring. Who, who's dead? Everybody in your family. <laughs> I'm the last, you and I are the last ones left. <laughs> it's a massacre. It's gruesome. It was terrible. All coincidence. Nothing connected. Everybody dropped dead within 24 hours. Complete happenstance. It's chaos here. We don't know what to do. Get on a plane immediately. But maybe don't, because you might die too. Uh. Anyway, hope you're doing well. <laughs> Love you. Thinking about coming to America this summer, I'll look you up. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's how you Quick. hang up with that news? <laughs> Did you consider the possibility that they were talking to somebody with the name Talk To Me? Because that really changes the tone. <laughs> no, that's that, interesting. That could be their name. They could just be like, Talk To Me. Or the company he works for is called Talk To Me. That's also another possibility. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> isn't there a, a movie called Talk to Me that just came out as well? Maybe they're talking about the movie. Maybe <laughs> they picked up and the first thing was, what's the name of that movie that just came out? And they said, talk to me. I once worked for a production company called Love and uh, you'd call them. They'd be like, hello, love. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hello, love. Uh, speaking of names, I had this idea when I was playing video games last night. I was thinking... It, wouldn't it be funny to change your gamer tag to something really clever? Like if you change your gamer tag to like, hey, Alexa, order butt cream. And then when you kill somebody in Call of Duty and they're like, oh, I just got killed by, hey, Alexa, order butt cream. And then Alexa's like, ordering butt cream. Oh my God, shut up. What's you, the. <laughs> Alexa's over there. She heard me. <laughs> did she she heard me. Did you just get yourself? I think hang I just on, got wait, myself. I think I just got myself. I can't hear what she's saying, but she's talking about me. <laughs> I think you might have a package at did the door. <sighs> I mean, that's a real face, honestly. <laughs> what a situation. That, did you just. But, when, <laughs> but I think people should, people should start approaching their gamer tags and their online monikers like that. You this, you I threw a ball in the air to take a swing at, you missed, and it hit you in the face. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, what but, just happened? But if I change my gamer tag to that, it might hit somebody else in the face, too. At least we know it works. <laughs> it works against you. You've created your own worst enemy, I think, potentially. Oh, what man. What do you think is the go-to brand of butt cream that she'd go for? I don't know. I have to go. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in the... Well, the I'll tell cream. you tomorrow when it shows up. It's normal butt cream for... On the outside of the butt or inside? That's a great question. I don't. I don't know. It probably depends on the problem. I'd assume. All right, hold on. I'm gonna Google butt cream. Butt cream. <laughs> I I assume there's a large variety of issues that butt cream could solve, whether it be rashes. Because um, my mind immediately goes to like baby butt cream for the outside, but then I'm thinking of like hemorrhoid cream, which would I assume be for the inside. The the first result is. This. I don't do we. <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. Boudreaux's butt paste. I think it it's for babies. A baby God. strong? Yeah. 
I feel like that's the origin story to Punch Out, <laughs> like the guy from Punch Out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is for this is for Gavin. Oh, butt acne cream. That's why your butt zits. <laughs> Made in the USA, baby. I mean, it's not ideal to have butt acne, but I can't imagine I'd ever care. You're not seeing your ass. Dude, there's, a, there's a lot. Yeah, but you want a presentable Brazilian ass for your bum cream, friends and partners, and that. <laughs> Is that why you don't have back tattoos, Jeff? I have a few, but because I can't see them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the main reason I don't have a lot of back tattoos is because I feel like it's it's the biggest piece of real estate on your body. And if I'm going to get something, I want to fill it up. And if I'm going to fill it up, it should be with something that I'm going to be able to put up with for the rest of my life. I just haven't found something that I care that much about yet. What about, hey, Alexa, order butt cream, just <laughs> left to right? You, you don't have an Alexa, do you? If I you don't. did right now, you'd have fucking... I don't. You'd have egg on USA, my face if I did. I would have stepped Bellamy right in that Lux trap. Bellamy Lux Butt acne cream would be on its way to you right now so you can exfoliate, <laughs> heal, and renew. There's a world in which we do a butt off. And it's just butt off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all use a different brand of butt cream and then we can pair results and see who, see who <laughs> to determine the best butt cream. We can just see if it makes us funnier, maybe, and just oh, try yeah? that. Yeah, just in case. Oh, like maybe instead of butt cream, we should just put Icy Hot on our butts? <laughs> No, we've done no. No, I feel like we've been there. No, I remember yeah, when we've, it we've, it dripped into my ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that again. That's a bad idea, Eric. And Nick, my Discord says new audio device detected. Uh, should I switch or should uh, I don't switch? Don't switch. Why would you switch? Don't. Switch. I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm just clicking. Don't switch. I don't know why I have a new audio device. Oh, should God. I switch or should I don't switch? <laughs> should I don't switch? <laughs> one two don't switch. Everyone loves one two don't switch. Uh, it's a great game. Hey, I gotta, I gotta, I need to gut check something with you guys real fast. Um, I've been watching a lot of Sloppy Joes again. Like, I had to take a little break after going there. You know, mm -hmm. you just like gotta chill out for a bit. But I'm back yeah. into it. It's been phenomenal since I got back into it. I have come up with like seven or eight new prompts that I think are fantastic. Ooh. And I, I was gonna have Gurky T uh, update the thing. <laughs> I already reached out to him about that. Something else. Uh, but. Uh, then I got to thinking, we're releasing those bingo cards in a couple months. Maybe we shouldn't change the list before we release the bingo cards. Can we not the update game. the bingo cards? I think they're already off to the printer. I think, yeah, we could I think just make all... a V2, can we? Like a yeah, DLC? I'm just saying, like, maybe after we release them, then I update the... I don't know. I just, what did you I call the guy? Gurky, Gurky T. <laughs> Gurky T. It's Ga Ga Gov GovCon. Gov Gov GovCon? His name is Go Gov 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 yeah. GovCon. Yeah. But I called him the wrong thing like in six episodes oh. ago, and so I just decided I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I've called him Gurky T and Gurky V. Yeah, he's the one who has the and the uh, one and only Andrew Balaclava right now. Yes. I feel like the hype surrounding the Andrew Balaclava is <laughs> through the roof. I've seen a lot of comment leavers saying they cannot wait to get, <laughs> to get their heads up one. Can oh. I make a request of, of all the comment leavers and regulation listeners... Uh, who comprise the potential list of uh, balaclava purchasers? Please don't commit crimes in the balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Please don't. Do not like. Let, don't take this as an opportunity to start a life of crime or to knock over a bank or a gas station or any of that. Like, don't do that. That's the, let, you don't use it for nefarious means. Please. Well, yeah. The, the whole reason behind the balaclava was that so I could wear a balaclava but not intimidate people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. Let's not taint the spirit of the balaclava by making Andrew's face public enemy yeah. number one. It's literally a balaclava for being nice. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Eric wrote that too. It's for being nice only. Oh. It's a nice balaclava for nice people who do nice things. It's a monstrosity is what it is. I mean, for just being honest, what a nightmare that thing is. I mean, I'm, you were wondering what you would be like for future generations, and they're going to Google you, and it's going to be people wearing your face. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Oh, God. Can uh, Speaking of nightmares, can I share you guys uh, the one thing in my life that's not going great right now? Of Bit course. Of I'm sorry you're having Everything else is awesome. I'm vibrating with happiness. We're making lots be, of good content. I'm real jazzed. It's going to be teeth or house. Yeah, it's going to be teeth or house. You're right. It's one of those two. You want to roll the dice and tell me which one you think it is? House. I think it's house. So, so discovered recently, be getting wasps in the house. Oh. Couldn't figure it out. Oh. 
The keep ended up in Millie's room. Went in the other day, looking at the window, realized that all of the windows on the south side of my house, which just gets blasted with sun, you know, my house is like 100 years old, and it's very old. Uh, the sun is melting my windows, and they're, they're shrinking out of the frame, <laughs> so that there's about a what? half inch, what? there's a, like a half inch gap between the top of the window and the house now. It's just like shrinking down. Like it's melted the like silicon seal or it's melting the yeah. glass out of the window. No, the glass isn't melting, but like the silicon seal or something, it's just like you can see it pooling up at the bottom and the and it's just <laughs> it's just falling you're, slowly. Oh <laughs> you're two summers away from owning a tiny home. Dude. It's just everything is gonna shrink. <laughs> every time get out before it gets too small. <laughs> every <laughs> before you're trapped. Every time I have a house problem and then I have to spend a bunch of money, I then recover from the house problem. And right about the time my savings and everything <laughs> recovers, I get hit with a new problem that costs almost identical to what the last problem cost. Do you know how much it's costing to get five windows put into my house? Oh. <laughs> that's a, oh, that's a, a $13,000 problem oh. right there, my friends. And... And oh my god, uh, you don't get god. them for three months. So <laughs> right around the time that the heat stops, I'll finally be able to plug the holes in Millie's room. Although I have stuffed it with insulating foam and and I cocked it. Like the guy gave me instructions on how to cover it up. So there's no longer s pure fucking sun and heat and wasps blasting in. But god oh damn it, man. So is it like a fridge from where they're a non-standard size, or is that just how much windows are? Uh, it's a couple things. I'm not buying vinyl windows. I'm buying from the same company that put the windows in the rest of my house, which mm. I didn't. It, they were there before I got here. So they're like two paned and they have argon inside the glass that's like, uh, it's uh, rated for like 20 years. And it's just to help like severely, or it's helped to tremendously lower the temperature uh, in the With house. With argon? It's so yeah, it's like, it helps, I guess. Um, insulate and uh the dual pane thing and it like helps with the uh, sound so that it'll actually it's, it's actually gonna help with a lot of problems we have uh with it being too hot on that side of the house uh because the oh. ac can't can't get all the way over there because i don't have a i don't have a i don't have an attic well if I you just have, put on shutters yeah that might be cheaper than new <laughs> windows but i'd still have the holes in the wall that's true to deal with and they're still and it's still falling like it's getting worse um <laughs> Anyway, so I got I got that to deal with, but I I remain I remain positive. But the fridge is still good and fridge is good. Yeah, it's fucking is good. awesome. You Dude, don't need me to send you new great. windows in the meantime. Dude, the toilet is better than ever. I god damn, dude. I have got I have got <laughs> toilet time dialed in between the Toto and the sunglasses. I it's it's I've really got it down to a, a a quite pleasurable science. Do you ass blast before a wipe, or do you wipe first and then blast your ass? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> do I wipe before I shit? No, no, no. The the bidet. He's clear the runway. Oh <laughs> no! Start, you gotta start wiping before you shit. Man. <laughs> it's like curling no. your ass. I'm just priming. <laughs> no, no, I blast after. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. You blast after what? After I shit. I'm I not asking. What are you asking? I, oh. I think what, he, what he's asking, Jeff, is if you've encountered anyone recently in the toilet that has a very specific set of traits that you wish that you didn't have. <laughs> yeah, this, the people that ask these questions. Uh, no, I, you asked if I, pre, if I blast my ass with the water before I poop? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Forget it. It sounds like Gavin likes to get a river going to help with the process. <laughs> Everything's I take poop medicine, so everything comes out real easily. I don't need I don't need the uh, I don't need the additional lubricant. Gavin, if it helps you, I know exactly what you're asking. This is just way better. Well, why don't you ask it? Did I ask it wrong? Well, Did yeah. I say the wrong thing? Hey, uh, do you wipe before you use your bidet, or do you use your bidet before you wipe? Oh, I I no, I don't wipe before I use my bidet. Hey man, do you blast off before you <laughs> shit and fuck or whatever? What's going on? Like <laughs> what an insane, what an insane way to I just thought you, that's how bidet people talk to each other, talk about blasting their ass. I poop do they? and then I bidet and then okay. I wipe. I'm pretty sure that's the preferred the preferred way to do it. 
Can you okay, talk so, to me talking about ass blasting? I'm not trying to reinvent the <laughs> shitting paradigm or anything in my bathroom. I'm just trying to have an enjoyable experience. When I've used a bidet, I have always gone for a courtesy wipe first, just so I don't get any uh, dirty splashage. Oh. I don't, I've never had a problem with dirty splashage. 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 <laughs> I've never had that problem. <laughs> well, maybe you don't know because you can't see it with the shades on. <laughs> that is a possibility. All right, uh, I'm gonna take next time I shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it without without sunglasses. So your new podcast is called Dirty Splashage, right, Jeff? <laughs> <It's a> splashage. <laughs> Andrew, do you think Eric will be as excited for our podcasts as he is for Jeff's? No. I, yes. <laughs> I'm excited about your podcast. What is it? I can't wait. My mine's called uh yeah in it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yours was called Toad in the Hole. <laughs> oh yeah. If Toad We're just hole. getting so all right off the ground and people are gonna start calling it yeah in, in it. it. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have you on as a guest, Gavin, that'll be the yeah in it episode. So. Oh sweet. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Oh that was a fun app. That was a loopy Good one ep. towards the end. A little loopy. Should we should we knock it off and do it again? Mm, yeah, we got to yeah. do another Are we going to give Andrew 10 minutes of downtime or whatever? No. Oh, Why good. don't you just try and research as much about potatoes as you can in 10 minutes? Uh, no. Okay. What if we just roll right into the <laughs> <laughs> Not All even right. one potato fact, huh? Oh, you, you know what? Oh, sure. I'll get you a potato. Fat every, next okay. How about this? How about this? Between now and the next episode, everybody, and I'm, I'm including you, uh, Eric and Nick as well, everybody Ooh. look up one potato fact, and then we'll all recite them at the beginning of the new episode, and we'll see if we have different facts or the same fact. If any two people have the same fact, they both lose. Oh. Okay. Okay. No points. Okay. This is how you tease a podcast. <laughs> Tune in next time to hear us all battle with <laughs> potato facts. Yeah, isn't it? Hey! <laughs> it's gonna be gold. Yukon gold. Oh. Bye bye! Hey guys, Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Are food shaped like things better? Dino Nuggets are the best nuggets. What is a potato smile? Jeff brings up Gus's obsessions. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs> <laughs>